Welcome everyone to Playground Sessions YouTube channel. I'm Phil and I'm gonna be answering your guys' questions from the comment sections on our channel. Let's get started. First question we have here is from T-Bone Winters. T-Bone Winters says, I would get this program if I knew how to hook up my iPad to my electric Yamaha. Well, T-Bone Winters, good news is you can. We've got an iPad app and all you need is a dongle, sort of a converter piece that allows you to come out of the charging point on your iPad and then go USB MIDI into your keyboard. I promise you can find an adapter piece like that pretty much anywhere on the internet. So go ahead and get to it. Okay, next question comes from KP Perez. KP Perez says, wow, I just found this site. I'm so glad to have also found out about Shalaya. I once took piano as a little kid and I've been wanting to buy a keyboard. So hopefully soon I'll be on here playing with you all. Yes, KP Perez, we hope to see you on here soon playing in the app and joining our community here online. I will say that Shalaya is an incredible artist and it was super fun to work with her. Anyone watching now that doesn't know who Shalaya is, you're gonna to wanna to check out her song, Grace. Shalea is a Quincy Jones artist, and of course we love Quincy over here at Playground Sessions. Shalea's song, Grace, is in the app in all difficulty levels, and you can play along with her actual voice as she's singing. She really, really has a beautiful voice, so check that out. It's in the Courses tab in our interactive app. All right, here's one from John Benedict Sebastian. What's up, John? John says, is it possible to play on a 61 key keyboard? Well, John's comment was on a specific video for a specific song on our YouTube channel, but I will tell you this, all of our song arrangements in our interactive app can be played on a 61 key keyboard. Now there might be some advanced classical examples where sort of it's an expert level and you may have to, to reach beyond that, but all of our original arrangements for rookie, intermediate, and advanced level songs across the song store are meant to fit in that range. And by the way, our proprietary keyboard, the Playground Sessions PG-150, that's a 61 key keyboard and that's intentional. Any song that you find in the app within that 61 key range can be played on that keyboard. All right, let's get to a question from Brandon J. Brandon J says, when is your next live stream? I'd like to watch and participate and ask questions during the next one. I was told you live stream on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, but you did not go live today. Do you announce when the next live stream is on the Facebook group or somewhere else? Please answer. All right, Brandon J, thank you for this question. Now, you're right, we've made a couple of changes recently. We've started to go live on the YouTube channel once a month, the final Wednesday of every month. For this month, the month of May, it's gonna be May 26th. And from there on out, we're gonna do the final Wednesday of every month. We're gonna do a big YouTube live lesson. We're gonna have a special guest. I'm gonna be performing a bit. I'm gonna be answering your questions live. Of course, we're gonna be doing pop quizzes so that you guys have the chance to earn free song credits and we'll be doing other giveaways and things like that. So mark your calendars, May 26th, 2021. Mark your calendars moving forward for the final Wednesday of every month for YouTube Lives. Now, in the Facebook community, I've been going live there more often just sort of for a quick, casual check-in. About once a week, I'm coming in and just answering some of the questions that I've seen written in the community across different topics. I'll also be taking live questions and answering them there on the spot for those who write in on the video. But those are typically 10 to 15 minute quick check-ins, quick conversation, see how everyone's doing. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification opt-in so that when we do go live, you're not missing it in case we decide to spring one on you. All right, all right, here's a good one from Oscar Garcia. Oscar says, I wanna know some exercises to make my brain play two different things on the piano with my right and left hand. So Oscar wants to get a little bit more syncopated and independent between the hands. And of course there are tons of exercises that can help you with this. In fact, what I'll say is any even song that has some syncopated parts, if you slow the tempo down and you subdivide, that could also be a good exercise. But here's something fun that I want you to consider, even away from your piano, what I want you to do is try tapping different rhythms, okay? I'm not even sure if you can see my hands on my desk. I think you can here. But first we'll start by playing the same thing, okay? Just quarter notes, let's say. 
Then in one hand we'll switch to half notes, the other hand will stay on quarter notes. And you can imagine that as you turn the dial, the knob up on difficulty there, you can start getting into some really weird patterns. One of my favorite ones to practice is a three over two rhythmic feel. So we have one, two, one, two. Other hand we have one, two, three, one, two, three. Left hand is one, two. Right hand is one, two, three, one, two, three. This is a really helpful exercise if you want to get better at triplets and of course, therefore, swing rhythmic feel. But really, I would encourage you to just slow down and practice a specific exercise, subdividing in your brain, really mapping out where the beats fall and take it slow. Thanks for writing, Oscar. All right, next question is from Darcy Gibb. Darcy says, how do you find the rest of the song in the app? Great question, Darcy. So as you YouTube subscribers know, we like to teach a section of a song from our app here on the channel for free. Now, if you wanna learn the rest of the song, the complete song, or learn it in different difficulty levels, or do anything else that the interactive app has to offer for premium paid subscribers, well, then you gotta do just that. You gotta become a subscriber. Then, of course, you can go into the Song Store tab, download songs, and then they will appear in your My Songs tab in your app. From there, you can go and browse jump around to any section of the song and learn with interactive notation. Now, if you're not a paid subscriber yet, you can tap this card above that says free trial of the app. That gives you 30 days to try the app just like a paid subscriber. All access, no strings attached. You gotta check that out. Okay, here's one from Bob Martin. Bob says, excellent explanation. Thank you indeed. Thank you, Bob. Bob says, can you explain how to get the second shadow transparent layer with the yellow and blue color strips for each key that you play? And which application do you use? Well, Bob, I'm not gonna give away all our trade secrets here, but you're right that I am using a secondary layer of yellow and blue keys that I overlay on top of my keyboard uh, in the video editing process. Now, there are plenty of software programs that you can use to generate a light up keyboard. Uh, we use Sibelius as our arranging app, and I know that Sibelius has a light-up keyboard. There are uh, games uh, such as Synthesia, which also can generate a light-up keyboard. Uh, but there's a ton of different ones out there. Here's what I'll tell you in this video. You're going to want to use the MIDI performance, the MIDI file from what you're playing. Plug it into a program that generates light-up keys, and then you're going to want to overlay that on top of your keyboard and do some video editing magic to remove everything that's not the color keys. Now let's just leave it there for now, but good luck exploring that if you're gonna be trying to create some of your own videos. Here's a quick question from Perry PM or P3RRYPM. Can you turn off finger numbers? Well, what Perry PM is referring to is in our interactive app, in the notation itself, we've got finger number suggestions. That's the number finger you should play any given note with. We write that right into the notation. However, you can toggle that off in the app so that you see nothing instead. Or you can change them from finger numbers to letter names of the notes. So if you see one on C, two on D, three on E, you would just see one, two, three, but you can toggle off the finger numbers and instead make them say C, D, E, if you want to get a little extra reminder of what the note letter names are. Again, you can also turn them off completely as an added test to see how well you really know the notes in a given piece of music. Now to switch between these different looks in your notation, I encourage you to get familiar with the toolbar that you have across the top of your app. There's all sorts of nice bells and whistles up there that help make learning a bit easier and a bit more fun. And included in that toolbar are buttons to toggle on the letters and the numbers in the notation. I encourage you guys to go explore everything that the interactive app can do especially getting familiar with the toolbars you've got across the top at any given time. Check it out. Okay, I think we've got time for a few more. Here's one from Carol M. What if in learning a song, I cannot play it at full speed? Is the goal always to be able to play fast? I get very frustrated when I'm good at the song and enjoy practicing until the app forces me to play it at a speed I'm not comfortable with, even after weeks of playing it. Why do apps force a speed in order to consider that song or part a success. A student always wants to progress through lessons, but when a lesson forces speed, I seem to quit. Speed takes years, right? Why force it? 
All right, Carol M, thank you so much for writing in. This is a great point. Speed and the completion of a certain song or part can kind of be subjective. Now in the app, we grade you as you play, of course, and so you're striving to get that 100% as a signifier that you have completed a given section, right? However, we also have things like tempo controls where you can slow down to a more of a practice speed. You can set a custom tempo in between our practice speed and our full speed. And so you're right to say that most apps or most curriculum even are going to sort of have a, a rubric in place, a way to grade you to show that you've mastered something. And to be able to play something at full speed is sort of the final step towards mastering a piece or an excerpt of a piece. However, you can set your own bar and you can decide that when you can play it at slow tempo, if you like it better at that speed, that's where you're gonna leave it. And that's okay. You won't be penalized in the app in any way. And you'll see that when you get even above an 80% on any practice segment in the app, you'll get a green check mark for completion. 80% or higher shows that you have gotten this part down. You've gotten at least the gist of it, the main notes and rhythms. Maybe you've missed one note or one rhythm here, but we consider that a green check, a completion, because we are not holding everyone to a standard of perfection. Now, of course, if you have your own bar set at at least getting a 90, let's say, then you may not want to move on until you hit that 90. If you need to get 100, all right, that's your bar. Go for that 100 before you move on. But it's important to remember that speed and tempo is a bit subjective. There's some wiggle room there. So once you've learned something in the app, maybe turn the screen off and just play in a way that makes you feel good. Maybe go over to the piano and close your eyes and play it at a speed that feels comfortable. Who's to say that that's not the correct speed for your performance? Okay, I think we have time for one more. Here's a question from Rosaro Fan 624 What's up? I don't know if anyone noted this yet, but it actually does matter what keyboard you are using. If you're using a digital keyboard, make absolute certain that the keys are weighted. If they aren't, the touch of an acoustic piano will be completely different compared to a digital without weighted keys. Weighted keys develop finger strength, while non-weighted keys do not. Okay, great point, Rosaro Fan 624 Okay, so when you're looking for a new keyboard, there's a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. One is, how serious are you about learning the piano? You don't have to go get the best, nicest keyboard that's gonna last forever if you're not sure yet, if you're just testing out the waters, for example. So keep budget in mind, of course. You also wanna think about range. Do you need 88 keys? Now that's a full-size keyboard. That's a full-size piano as well, 88 keys. But as I mentioned earlier, the vast majority of songs in our app can be played on a 61 key keyboard. I also have a 73 key keyboard that I really like. So range is something to be considered, but you don't necessarily need the full width of the full 88 key keyboard to learn how to play and to learn a significant amount at that. Now, the next thing you wanna consider as Rosaro Fan 624 has pointed out, how weighted are the keys? Are they fully weighted? Are they semi-weighted? Are they not weighted keys? Now, where I will disagree with the commenter here is that they have to be fully weighted. I think if your goal is to become a, a really, really good pianist who's playing on acoustic pianos and who is in full command of their dynamic control, maybe you're talking about performing in a recital or becoming a professional pianist. If that's the path for you, that's cool. And of course, you're gonna wanna be practicing all of the subtle techniques that go into mastering the touch of the acoustic piano. And included in that is the weighted keys, of course. But for the majority of us who are learning as a hobby or who want to play for fun, I will tell you that weighted keys are not something that should be a make or break in your decision. Especially because as keys get more and more authentic, as keyboards get more and more bells and whistles, the price is gonna go up. So if you're not sure about your commitment to the keyboard, and you wanna dip a toe in the water or even a foot, I don't think you need fully weighted keys. I think you will be better in the end if you stick with piano in the long term if you've practiced with weighted keys. But it's just consideration, just like range and budget when you're looking for what's right for you. So first check with yourself, what are your goals 
and how serious are you at this stage? Then you wanna pick a keyboard that fits that accordingly. And to wrap things up, I'll steer you guys over to our website where you can buy different keyboard bundles that come with the Playground Sessions interactive app at significant discounts. You can buy keyboards beyond just our PG150 as well. So whatever your price range is, whatever your goals are for the piano, I encourage you to start looking on our site because you can find something that's right and it comes with the interactive subscription. In case you missed it before, tap the card above that says, what are you waiting for? That's gonna take you to a page where you can sign up for a free trial of our interactive app. And again, that's 30 days, no strings attached all access. On top of that, guys, we're doing a ton of free content here on the YouTube channel regularly. I'm trying to do more per week, but for now we're doing song lessons, we're doing quick tips on the piano, we're doing Q and A's, we're doing live streams and more. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up for me, please. And if you wanna see more from Playground Sessions YouTube, you gotta hit subscribe. I'm Phil and I will see you guys soon, I hope, for some more video lessons. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Phil. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap that notification bell. And be sure to check out the Playground Sessions interactive app. It was co-created by music legend Quincy Jones. Playground teaches the piano with interactive feedback and gaming features, all while using your favorite songs.